Hey there, everybody. Melissa here with Coaching with Melissa, where I help brick and mortar and service-based businesses go from chaos to clarity through consistent action. And I come in live every week inside my Facebook group in the nitty gritty for Boss Babes to share with you tips, tools, and strategies that I've learned in my business to help you in yours. This week's theme is all about time management because that's what's Everybody's talking about what they're struggling with um, in my clients, with my conversations in the community. So today I'm going to share with you one tip that I love to help me get better with my time. And it has nothing to do with time blocking. So let's get real. Okay, this is like my fourth time starting this video because I'm not sure what's going on. I keep saying I don't have wire um, internet connection, but here we are. Hello, hello. I um, see somebody on. Say hello. It's a beautiful day. Oh, it's gorgeous. Happy Friday. Hope you guys are well. It is, we're in the swing of it. In Wisconsin, kiddos are, at least in my area, we are in school. Thank you. <laughs> we are in school. And um, I have a little one home today. My baby's home um, with a, just a cold and tis the season, change of scenery, change of seasons, and that's just the way it is. Um, so I'm enjoying the extra snuggles and one-on-one -on -one time. I wanted to talk about time management because it's come up everywhere um, in my mastermind, with my clients, um, even me just feeling like I think I know better than the system I had in place and I'm going against it. And um, so I want to share with you this tip. It's dad E, okay? D-A-D-E, all right? When you're doing things, as you're going through your life, your business, all the things, I want you just to make a mental note, but if you're able to write it down, do that, or use this acronym, okay? First one is do. That is the thing that only you can do, okay? So this coaching, this training here, only I can do right now, okay? And I only wanna do it. But there are other things that other people can do, and we're gonna talk about that. But as you think about what you can do, you're gonna realize that the list is actually really small based on what we're gonna do here. The second one is automate. There are so much awesome things out there with tech, all right? But I don't want you to get caught up with that because some of us will say, I'm not tech savvy. There are very easy to use platforms to help you automate. For example, the email that went out for this Facebook Live was automated. I did that early this morning at like five and I scheduled it for 11.15 so that you got it right before the Facebook Live. That's automation. Um, anytime I schedule appointments with people, it's all automated through Acuity. That's my scheduling link. If you don't have it and want it and want a two week free trial via my account, you can go to my tips for business owners. It's my um, uh, five business tips for business, life and family or tools that I use to keep consistency and you can get a free access to Acuity. And that's what I use to get all my stuff automated all my appointments so I don't have to go back and forth and email people it's just boom done they schedule it and they get the reminder but so those are those are tech things but I also want you to think about other things that you can automate in your life that just help keep your time um, blocked so one way that I automate that's not through um, tech is I still do some of my bills manually like writing checks, but I also go through my, you know, bills and reconcile. And I do that on the 10th and on the 25th. I used to be the person that I'd get a bill in the mail and then I'd sit down and figure out if I had the funds and write the check right away or move things around and write the check right away. And I stopped doing that after reading Profit First and it has been so freeing. Now, some of that is automated because a lot of stuff is, um, bills are taken out, but the stuff that I still have to manually do and reconcile, you still have to go through your books. I do that on the 10th and the 25th, and it's just so freeing. Another thing that I automate in my system, in my life, in my personal life, is laundry day. I don't do it any other day except Saturday. I've tried to do it other days, but it doesn't work. So I do Saturday and that's it. If it doesn't get done Saturday, it's not gonna happen until next Saturday. So what can you automate in your schedule that frees you up so you are not jumping when, it, when, it, when it's perceived that it needs to happen? Another one is delegate. Some of you are probably going, Melissa, delegate that laundry to your kids. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm, I'm working, I'm working progress. But I do delegate the lawn mowing, 
Okay, so what can you do in your life, going through your stuff in your life, what can be delegated? Um, this personal and business. So grocery shopping can be delegated through Shipt or Instacart, and I love it, highly recommend it. If you have lawn mowing and you have kids or maybe a neighbor kid, get it delegated, have them do it. Is your time worth it? Or is it, you know, and you have to really play with that balance. Sometimes it's like, you know what? I really enjoy lawn mowing the lawn because it just helps me um, stre relieve stress. And that may be worth it to you, but I pay my kid three bucks and he's happy and I'm happy. Um, a lot of my stuff, because I have five kids, I think I am able to delegate things a little easier and I don't get caught up in the, with the perfectionist thing. I'm like, I don't clean toilets at my house. That's all delegated with kiddos. And yeah, it may not be the way I want it sometimes, but it gets done and it is what it is, okay? So what can you do that is um, delegated? Another one idea, I mean, we do this naturally as mamas, but carpooling, and be more intentional about it. Like, gosh, I'm running to and fro. Is there anybody that I can partner with so I'm not having to do both sides of it? So another one is cleaning. Um, I talked about the kids cleaning and groceries. So um, a carpool is another example of that. That's a simple example, but maybe it triggers something else. Like, gosh, I am running here and here and here. How can I delegate this better with other people? Um, if you have a driver in the house, they can do some of that running for you with other things. And then finally, E. So you have D, do, automate, delegate, and then we have E, eliminate. There comes a time when you get to be a little older, a little wiser, and you're busier. And there comes to think that like Jen Hatmaker, my good friend Jen Hatmaker, will say, it's not on my beam. I'm not on my balance beam. I'm balancing all the things on my beam and that thing is going off the beam. It's not worth my time anymore. For example, maybe you are a business owner and you used to do this event. Maybe you have an event in another area, another community, but it's never really brought you business and you're doing it because it's a friend's event. Now, there comes a time, is it worth your time? Or can you delegate it or can you eliminate it? There are things that I did in the beginning of my business that I don't do now because it's not worth my time or it's not giving me the ROI. Okay, so I want you to think about that. And the same thing with, you know, personal things in your home. Are there things that mm, it's just off the table? We don't even do it anymore. Okay, so as you go through your life, your busy life, juggling all the things we do, business life, kids, partners, what can we do? What do we have to do? What can we automate either software wise with tech or automate in our system and schedule of life? What can we delegate? And there are a lot of things that we can delegate, all right? And then we can eliminate. When we delegate, I just wanna talk a little bit about this. Delegating takes a little bit of time, just like onboarding a uh, team member. So you have to plan for that when you delegate. For example, I'm gonna give you this example. So Saturday morning is deep clean the studio. And I am training one of my kids to do that. And I still do it and I do it because it's honestly my de-stress time. Okay, I do it early in the morning Saturday. And I'm training my kiddo and it's taking time, okay? But once it's done, and, it's, and he's trained and you're taking that time to train him, then it's off your plate. So know that there is a little bit of grunt work up front, but you, you have to, that's just part of the deal. That's part of the deal because ultimately it's gonna save you time, all right? So really think about what you can do, what you can automate, what you can delegate, and what you can eliminate on your tables, off your table, off your beam, whatever you wanna call it, so that you can be more efficient with your time and um, keep that time boundary in place for you. My clients this week were talking about how they jump when somebody needs something. And I want you to not jump. I want you to really take a breath and say, does this need to happen now? Is this something that I can do later? Or is this something I can give to somebody else to do? Or does it need to be done at all? Okay, so just take a breath and find out what really needs to happen because what's happening is that somebody needs us and it's perceived 
to us that it needs to happen now because most of us are doers and want to get it done because it makes us feel productive. And sometimes it doesn't need to be done right now. It can be done later this afternoon when I have an open spot or it can be done tomorrow because I have more time. And when you set the boundary for your time, people will respect your time. Okay, so if you don't respect your time, nobody else is gonna respect your time either. But if you say very gently, say, you know what, I would love to help you, or that is a great idea. I don't have time today in my calendar, but I have time tomorrow at this time or after this time. Can I give you my link and we can schedule a call and let's talk about it? People go, oh, okay, yes. And see that you are about guarding your time and they'll respect that, okay? This one's a little longer because it talked about those tips and I just, it's just something we always are struggling with, especially as we go into new seasons. Like now we have the school schedule. We're gonna talk about it again, probably when summer comes, yes? <laughs> all right, and Christmas and all that fun stuff. I hope you guys are well. Catch the podcast this week. We have lovely Kellen, Kelly Nolan on. She is actually a time minute management expert. And she's got a freebie for you. So if you did not get the email, go to the blog, MsMelissaRose.com. There's a freebie from Kelly in there, ditching the to-do list and why we need to do it. And I have my workshop coming up next week, Visibility, 10 free ways to get more eyes on your business, people in your doors, and buying your products or services. So that is a workshop via Zoom, talking through strategies and actions so that you can get more top of mind for your people. All right, y'all, have a great week. Uh, let me know your takeaways in the comments. I always appreciate that. Take care, guys. Peace. Bye-bye.